configuration here, our home storage battery and our energy usage generally. If you've been following my videos so far you'll know that on a monthly basis I'm updating as to what's happening with our configuration, what observations I'm making and what I'm learning through the process and also the numbers. A lot of people I know like to compare the numbers and see what's going on. So let's start with what's changed, what's been happening in my world here. Well the first thing to say is well the seasons are changing, it's, it's August now but for me, August should be summer, but it's starting to feel like winter. August has been really, really weird that uh, the start of the month was really bright, really sunny, just felt like summer. But the second half, the second half is, it really has. It's been cold, windy, rain, dark skies. Even on two occasions, our hot water wasn't heated by the My Energy Eddy device. So we didn't have hot water for those two days. Um, just really bizarre weather that it just seems to have arrived really, really quickly. The days are getting shorter. Um, we're noticing that um, you know, previously in the summer, you used to have the battery and hot water up to temperature by 9, 9.30 in the morning. Now, sometimes it's in the middle of the afternoon. It's it's changed dramatically. And yeah, it, it is odd, that not it, that sometimes when you own these solar configurations, they feel perfect, but they feel perfect in perfect conditions. And it's hard to remember already for me what it's like in winter. We just don't have enough resource. So, um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to the winter. I'm not looking forward to not having enough resource. But one of the other changes that's happened is um, I've got rid of my electric car. I've sold it. I've decided to change and go for a different car. So in the interim, I'm without an electric car. Now, as a result, I'm not going to be consuming as much energy. So more of the solar energy that I'm generating can go towards running the house, filling the battery and heating our hot water. And then, of course, when another electric car arrives, which it will do at some point, then uh, I'll start consuming more energy again. So far, with um, a home battery installed, I've basically gone from March through to now, which is um, coming up September, without using any grid energy. Now, I say without using any, you know, what I mean is not using very much at all, you know, whether it's two, four, six, or as in this month, as you'll find out in a few moments, nine kilowatt hours of grid energy. That still feels like not a lot, you know, it's point something on most days. And I think just one day this month, we uh, consumed over one kilowatt hour of energy, which for those people that are used to consuming uh, lots and lots of grid energy, you know, it's a tiny amount, it doesn't matter, it is nothing. But to me, um, I think normally in August, we'd be expected to use around 50 or 60 kilowatt hours of energy. So one in a day is actually quite a lot. It's, um, it's a big proportion. So I'm still learning with the home storage batteries, how to best utilize them and how much energy you really do use with them. My expectation was that it would uh, get rid of all of our grid usage because it would soak up any excess that we'd normally draw from the grid. But that just hasn't happened and it continues to be the same that on cloudy days, especially, and where we're charging the car, especially. So you've got high loads and high amounts of solar going up and down as the clouds go past. Then those days with the delays on the amount of time it takes for the inverter and the battery to pick up the load completely, then that delay, which is on this device here, the Pure Drive battery with the Victron inverter that we have, that takes up to 16 seconds to fully pick up the load, which to me seems like too long a time and it's having too big an impact. The other thing that uses all the grid energy is of course the amount of grid draw that you have as the grid balances itself with the frequency. So even when you're not using any, sometimes you just draw a little and over a 24 hour period, that little all adds up and it becomes you know, a 0.1 and a 0.2, those sort of things. So you still do draw grid energy, even though you would hope that you wouldn't. The last thing I can say is uh, now that we've got less sun coming through in the end of August, I've definitely noticed more often that we are consuming grid energy more by exceeding the power limit of the device, which is 2.3 kilowatts. So 2.3 kilowatts plus the amount of solar that we've got coming through sometimes isn't enough to power our home and power what we're doing. So 
If I'm doing anything that's using a lot of start stop as well, whether it be a lawnmower, a hedge trimmer, um, an induction uh, hob, those sort of things, they're fluctuating a lot and they use a lot of energy. So nothing seems to be perfect. And uh, yeah, you know, I've said a few months now in a row almost that it just feels like we need a small wind turbine. And no, I haven't progressed that at all as yet. It's still on my radar. It's still something I want to investigate, but I think I'd like to get the battery out of the way first. So battery wise, this pure drive battery that we have at the moment is 4.8 kilowatt hours. The daft thing is pure drive uh, as you know from previous videos, um, they had a faulty battery to start with. So eventually after coronavirus, they uh, delivered a new battery which has been installed and now working. But they didn't pick up the old one because they didn't actually tell us when they were going to come and uh, pick it up and deliver the other one. So obviously if they don't tell us, then we couldn't have the other one disconnected. Um, the delivery man turned up expecting one to go back. I'm just really not sure what they were thinking about because there's no way you're going to disconnect one until the actual time needed. You're not going to disconnect one for three months on the hope that they come back. So what world they were thinking of, uh, I just really don't know. So anyway, I now have two batteries here, one connected, one disconnected. It really is a great shame we can't connect them together because I think 9.6 kilowatt hours and then 20% off that for my usable energy, that could be a good battery size. And uh, I might quite like a solution like that. I don't think we need much more than that because I don't think we can cost justify it. Basically, the more contingency you have, the more excess in that battery you have, the more you're paying and not using for the majority of days. You're only using it on those really dull periods where you can't top up your battery again. So I think just cost wise, it doesn't make sense to go much higher for me. Which one I'm still interested in uh, ultimately to buy, I'm really not sure yet. Um, I do still like the sound of the Pylon Tech batteries, especially the 3.5 kilowatt hour, the US 3000 modules. They're slightly cheaper cost per kilowatt hour and you need fewer of them coupled together to get really high outputs as well. So I do like the sound of that. So it's just really, if I went for batteries like that, which are cheaper than say LG Chem or other things, which inverter shall I go for? Which inverter solution shall I go for to couple them up? And I don't want to go for a so far um, solution. That's a little bit too basic for me. Um, I've thought about Lux Power and I've thought about you know, this uh, Solace solution. Uh, we're thinking about installing a Solace hybrid inverter next after this pure drive battery goes. So I'd be really interested to test that and see how that goes. I don't know yet what batteries will actually be connected to it. So yeah, I've got to watch just as you've got to watch and find out what happens and uh, what gets installed next. I'm really looking forward to trying something different to see whether it really was just this pure drive and Victron um, solution, which was giving me these delays and whether other solutions, perhaps more modern ones, are a little bit faster and a little bit better. And uh, yeah, I'm also hoping that we get a little bit more power than 2.3 kilowatts uh, for charging. I think that was fine for me. I didn't mind that. Uh, that worked really, really well. Um, but for discharging, uh, the amount of power we can add to our solar to power the house, I think a little bit more than 2.3 kilowatts is needed here. 3 to 3.6 would be okay. Anything above 4, I think would be absolutely fine. So that's my ultimate configuration when I eventually get there. The other solution that uh, I'll mention again that I've found in previous investigations was this Give Energy solution. Um, I've seen them for sale in a few different places, but Give Energy basically is a really large Chinese brand um, owned by a big um, Chinese battery manufacturer. And they seem quite good. Um, the inverters are both basically AC coupled and also hybrid inverters. Uh, they've got a full range of those. They provide all the solutions uh, for monitoring online and they provide their own batteries. It seems nice and modular. It seems as though you can add inverters together to get increased power levels. You can add extra batteries to double your size. So that all seems really, really good. I suppose the, the only downside with something like Give Energy is it appears that their inverters only work with their batteries and their batteries only work with their inverters. So it's um, a tied in solution. So once you've got it, you're a little bit stuck and can't change. 
It's another benefit of sticking with something like Pylon Tech, where it's a mix and match. You can go for your batteries and you can buy additional batteries and top them up, whether they're the US 2000 or the US 3000, you can add either to increase your configuration. And if your inverter had any problems or you wanted to change for any reason, you can do so without sticking with the same manufacturer that you had before. So, I do like that flexibility, I like that openness, and I also like um, the longevity of the Pylon Tech batteries. It seems as though also Pylon Tech now support up to 90% depth of discharge included in their warranty for the batteries. So that, uh, well, 90% depth of discharge is effectively getting 10% more kilowatt hours that's usable. And if you're getting it for the same price, then the price per kilowatt hour usable is coming down. So that seems like a key benefit as well of going with Pylon Tech. One of the solutions that I'm looking forward to hearing more about is whether my energy, the manufacturers of the Zappi car charger and also the Eddy device for heating your hot water on your immersion, there's rumor, there's strong rumor, shall we say, that they're going to be releasing something in 2021 part of a home battery solution. And you can see they've got it in mind already that when you look at their app, that uh, their app currently does support batteries so that you can see whether a battery is being charged or discharged and you can see it in the configuration on the app. But when you click the icon for the battery, you can't see any data and the wording it gives you is something like not supported yet, which makes you think that they're keeping that technology for their own battery solution so that third party batteries aren't gonna see the data but their own proprietary technology is going to see the data. And I do like that, especially since I've got an Eddie and a Zappi device, because if they fully integrate, then they should blend together better and they shouldn't compete against each other. Not that that's a problem necessarily. Um, that's worked actually quite well here with our pure drive battery. I'm not sure if that prioritization and blending together is a key reason for going with a company like My Energy. But the data all being in one place, if they fix their app and if they fix historical data, might be a benefit that's worth having. But for me, it's the hardware. If they get the hardware right so that it's really fast and it really does switch instantaneously and therefore you save more energy and you are the greenest you can possibly be, then that might persuade me to go their route. What they're actually manufacturing, I have no idea. Uh, in my mind, it's unlikely to be batteries. It's likely to be um, a couple of inverter devices, whether it's AC coupled or whether it's a hybrid inverter for connecting to solar, I really don't know, but I'd expect it to be open so it supports any solar panels and as many battery solutions as possible. That again sounds good, that if it's open and supports other batteries, it could support something like the Pylon Tech batteries. So that suits my mindset at the moment. So I'm interested in following that one a little bit more to see whether anything comes and comes by the end of the year and early next year. But uh, in the meantime, I'll be progressing hopefully with this Solus hybrid inverter and we'll see how we get on with that. So right, enough of the waffle. Let's get on to the statistics. What have we actually done for the month of August 2020? And how does that compare to last August? Okay, let's start with hot water heating via the My Energy Eddy device. 103 kilowatt hours of solar energy used to heat our hot water. And as I said, we had just a couple of days where the hot water wasn't up to temperature. But no, we didn't turn the boiler on, just solar energy for hot water for the entire month of August. Charging our electric car, apart from a very small charge on an Instavolt charger for a test during the month of August, we used 102.91 kilowatt hours from the solar panels and 5.52 from the grid. And that's 6% from the grid, that's basically where the Zappi isn't using solar energy, so it's not reacting quick enough and hence we're still drawing some from the grid. Looking at our entire year's usage of um, energy for charging our electric car over 2020, that's currently at 695 kilowatt hours from the solar panels and 79 kilowatt hours, 11% from the grid. And that 11%, the 79 kilowatt hours multiplied by 15 pence per kilowatt hour, that's £11.85 cost for charging our electric car for the year so far. 
pretty good. Looking back at the mileage on the car from the beginning of the year, I'm quite surprised to see we've only done 4,000 miles in eight months. So we've only been averaging, because of the lockdown, 500 miles a month so far this year. If I divide the 774 kilowatt hours into the 4,000 miles, that comes out at 5.15 miles per kilowatt hour. But of course, there's some public charging in there. Not very much, but there is some, and therefore it will be less than that. But roughly five miles per kilowatt hour, that's pretty good. 746 kilowatt hours generated for the month of August, slightly better than March this year, but worse than every other month this year. Uh, if you compare to last year though, when we only had the one solar array, obviously we're doing a lot better. Looking at the day by day on our first solar array, this is the 3.9 kilowatt hour array, the worst day of the month only generated 3.1 kilowatt hours. And you can see from that point onwards, the month was just completely different. To start with, we had plenty of solar energy. We actually had the air conditioning on, it was so hot. But after that, it just cooled down, the skies grayed over and everything just seemed a bit worse. Again, if we focus on the 3.9 kilowatt array and just look at the month by month comparison, you can really see how August hasn't been so good this year. But looking at the same graph for last year, we can see that August was actually the best generating month. So we've just got different weather and different results this year. The most notable number that's changed is the amount exported. That's now reduced down to 200 kilowatt hours. And as the amount we generate reduces further month by month into the winter, I'll obviously expect that exported amount to reduce down to almost zero as we consume just about everything possible. Looking at the battery statistics on the Victron inverter application, we can see that we added 85.69 kilowatt hours to the battery and we discharged just over 76 kilowatt hours. The difference between the two, well, that's the efficiency level of the inverter. We're obviously putting more energy into the battery than what we're actually getting out. It's also interesting to see here that the Victron inverter is showing import from the grid at 7.6 kilowatt hours, pretty close to the nine that's reported by the solar edge inverter. So in summary then, we generated 746, we imported 9, and then the consumed numbers do account for all that energy, which is always good when it adds up. Obviously there's a little bit of rounding in there as well. So how did you do for the month? What did you generate and what did you consume? I'd be very interested to hear from you, so let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and uh, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help. Uh, I hope there was something there that uh, you found interesting and enjoyable. And uh, if you're watching this now, you've obviously watched it through to the end. So again, thank you for your time. See you again soon. More updates, solar configurations. Hopefully by the end of next month, we'll actually have a different home storage battery installed. And uh, there might be an update on my new electric car too. So see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.